Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, you are going to learn how to extend backgrounds like this, this or even this. My name is Olivio, and if you want to learn how to edit photos, you came to the right place. Also, let me know in the comments what other kind of background extension you would like to know about. Let's start with the simplest version, and that is this kind of background. The reason why it is simple is because it is both blurry and consists of things where we don't know the exact shape, like for example, water and natural formations, right? Like stone, for example. Good. So the starting point here is how do I make my canvas bigger so I get this checkerboard in the background. By the way, if you're not seeing a checkerboard, if yours is white, simply go up here to document and here you can switch it to transparent or not transparent. Right now you can see it's transparent. If I switch this off, it's going to be white. So you want to have this in most cases that way. So you see the checkerboard because then you know that is an actual transparent area in your picture. Good. So. The way to extend this is super easy. You go here on the left side to your crop tool, because when you click on that, you can not only make the picture smaller, you can also make it bigger. You just grab these handles and resize it to any size and any ratio you want to have. And then either click on apply or hit the enter key on your keyboard. And there we go. Your canvas is bigger. Now here is something you need to look out for. When you want to extend this background, we are stretching it. You can't stretch that indefinitely because at some point people are going to see it is stretched. So only stretch it a small distance, right? Okay. But how is this stretching going to work? Well, First of all, I would suggest you right click on the background layer or the image layer and duplicate it so you simply have a backup of that. Then the next step is going to be that on the left side you have this selection tool here that might look any of these icons and you want to click and hold that and then select the rectangle mark you tool from that list. That's pretty important. Now make a selection that starts somewhere close to the start of the image and drag it from top to bottom like that and then bring it close to the main subject. Not too close, but like in the close vicinity like that, right? Okay, so now that we have done that, the simple next step is we switch over to the move tool like so, grab the handle here and stretch this out so it covers and goes to the edge of the picture. Sometimes in that situation, Affinity Photo makes a little mistake where it creates a one pixel gap between the stretched part and the original picture. To fix that, what you want to do is to press once the arrow key on your keyboard that goes the opposite direction. So we stretch to the left side. Now we are going to hit the arrow key for the right side once. This is moving it over by one pixel. And now when we deselect, you can see there is no arrow. It's just like very smoothly stretching out to the side. And then of course we repeat the same thing on the other side. You can see here that I'm not going as close to the hat because the paw down here is sticking out. Again, go to the move tool, stretch this out to the side like so, hit the arrow key to the left this side, deselect, and we have extended the background. Let's go to our next case where we have a flat wall, but on the left side, the image is overexposed and we want to fix that. So. You can see here we have a nice evenly lit background that gives us ample space to do that. But this time we are not going to stretch this because we have a repeating pattern here with equal distances, right? So what we are going to do is again use our rectangle mark you tool and select this area here where it starts to get white over to the right side so we have a nice cushion area basically that would cover the left side of the image with no problem. Okay, so after we have made that selection on your keyboard, you want to press control C for copy and then control V to put in your copied area. As you can see here, we now have a new layer. And with this layer selected, what you want to do is to go to arrange and then flip horizontally like this. So you can see now it's the other way around. 
And now here is a little trick. Go to opacity over here and then reduce that opacity a little bit so you can see the image in the background and in the foreground at the same time. We are going to use that to move the image over to the left like so and line up these, how can I say, these gaps between the tiles, right? So this is actually the same distance and it's the same pattern in the background, right? So that's pretty easy. After we have done that, we go and set the opacity back to 100% like so. Good. Now we have this white line here left. So we are simply going to use the erase brush. There's actually two ways to do this. You can use the erase brush that is destructive. You can also create a mask that would be non-destructive. I'm going to use the eraser here. I set it to opacity 50%, hardness zero. The size depends on your resolution. And of course, it's a simple round brush. And then, of course, I need to select my layer here and I can then erase that part from the image. The reason why I set this to 50%, not 100% is so I have a little bit more control and I can go over these areas multiple times and make a softer kind of... Um, border to the other side of the image. So this already looks pretty good. I would say you can see here we have a little bit of repetition in our pattern also up here and over there. This is not going to be a problem for us, of course. And here are two ways that I want to show you how to fix that. One way is that you create a new layer over here, new pixel layer like this. And then you are going to use your clone brush tool like so. You want to set this to source layers beneath, right? So all the layers under the layer that you have just created. And then with the Alt key pressed, you can select a source point, for example, up here. And then you can paint this down here. For example, in this area, I'm just going to paint over this. Uh, you can also see at my settings, opacity 40%. I always like to have an opacity is not 100%. So I go over it and lay on thin layers until I'm happy with that. So I can mix it also a little bit. Um, the second way that you can do that is that you go down here where it says in paint brush and you select the patch tool. And we are going to do that over here, for example, with this area. And you click and drag so you make this line around the area you want to fix. And then, by the way, here, source, you also have to go to layers, current, and beneath. And now you can see, after I've made that selection, where I point my mouse will give me a preview of what is going on in the picture. So I can simply line this up over here and then click once and click again. And you can see this area has been fixed no problem, super fast. So basically we have already extended the background here and it took seconds and was technically really easy. Now here comes the magical part where we do the same thing, but for a picture on an angle where the background is not parallel to our camera. How are we going to do that? This is also very easy. What you want to do here is that you want to duplicate the picture like so. Right click, duplicate. And then this time we want to manipulate the lower layer. We will keep the layer on top, this one intact. And then we have this other layer below it. We will move that around. So what we are going to do here is that you move this to the left side so it covers everything in a way where you say, okay, that's good. But you also, again, Think about the pattern repetition in the background. So what you need to do here is to find a position where these bricks are in a situation where they have the correct uh, width, for example. So for example, up here, you can see that we have this white line where we see that there is a gap between the bricks. So we can use that to um, have a source for our understanding on how to move that and line these upper parts here up so the gap makes sense between them, right? Good. So after we have done that, focus on this point. Remember that this is what you lined up. Now you want to click up here on Enable Transform Origin. And this gives you this point down here, this blue point. You want to move that up here 
to that area. So it sits here like that. And this is now the origin point of our image. What this does for us is if I now grab these handles on the side, these corner handles, and at the same time, I'm holding my control key, you can see that the image is scaling around that origin point. And with that, I can simply scale it until it is fitting the other bricks as good as possible. So let's see if we can make that happen. That looks pretty good. It's a little bit out of line up here. So maybe I think we want to move this a little bit up like so and then move this point a little bit down here. Let's try this again. Again, hold control, move this up a little bit. Nah, it's a little bit problematic here. Maybe we stretch this up a bit like so. That's better. Stretch this down a little bit. Whoops, not too much like so and perfect. There we go. As you can see, we have fixed that. Now what we want to do again is to look for areas where this is not perfect. And as you can see here, down here, this is not perfect. Also, if we zoom in, we can see we have a line here that is also a little bit harsh. So what we can do with that is again, either use the eraser or create a mask. So in this case, just to show you how that works, I'm going to create a mask on the upper layer because that's the unchanged layer. Click here on that mask button like so. So we have created a mask. Then use the brush down on the left side here. You can see paintbrush tool, very easy. You select the black color. Again, set the opacity lower. 39% sounds good. And you can see here now if I paint over this, this is going to blend it the same way the erase button was going to do it or the erase tool, not the button. Um, down here, you can see we have this shadow area that stems from the side of his body. So this is not exactly possible to fix that way. So for this, we're going to use another technique. And this is solved in that way where you use your freehand selection tool this time like that. And you select the upper layer, this one here. And you want to select, for example, this area so something that has the same content, but is evenly lit, right? Super easy. Now you have made the selection. Don't copy yet. You want to go to select feather and then set a high radius for that. Again, this depends on the resolution of your image. I will set it to 50 pixels like so. And this gives a very smooth border around the selection. Now again, on my keyboard, I press Control C and Control V. And you can see that we have created that selection here. It also created a mask here, so we can delete that. We don't need that actually. And the only thing you need to do right now is to move this over here and then reduce the opacity a little bit and size this up. So all the sides line up nicely like so. Super easy as you can see. And then I set my opacity back like this. And there we go. We have fixed that area. Okay, so the only last step you want to do here is to look for any forms of repetition or any way where things don't line up. For example, I'm seeing here that this doesn't line up. So let's play around with that a little bit. This is better. Let's move this a little bit down. Maybe rotate this even a little bit like so. Okay, that's actually better. Good. And then also we have these points here. So to fix that, I'm simply going to create a new layer on top. And I can use in this case, either the patch tool or I can also use my in paint tool. Let's use that just so you see it again, current layer and below as a source up here. And then you simple paint on these areas here. So affinity photo can fix them and you can see so that's easy. You can also remove this one if you want to. So that really depends on how clean you want the wall to be. There is another point that stands a little bit out uh, from the repetition. But the rest seems to be fine. Maybe this point here too. And there we go. You have extended the background in perspective. That's the tutorial for today. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.